All right, if uh, let's just all just take a deep breath and connect with one another. As I recite the prescription. We are aligned with the presence of God within. We are protected by God's love, wisdom, knowledge, and grace. The God consciousness within helps us discover more about who we are. Thank you, God, for the gift of spiritual intuition. Thank you, God, for aligning our conscious, subconscious, and super conscious minds. Thank you, thank you. Well, we've got an amazing video uh, set for you today. So fitting with uh, this week and uh, coming upon Valentine's Day, and she made this specifically uh, uh, during the week of Valentine's Day. And uh, one of the things that uh, being a student with her for um, over 20 years that she has said on numerous occasions, and of course I've had uh, in that time uh, different answers to the question. And she'll ask the question, and I'll bring it to you at this point. And then of course, within the video, uh, I even think she even provides some, uh, some hints as to the actual answer. And the question is, if love is the answer, what is the question? So as you sit with that question, I'm gonna have Susan go ahead and start the video and I'll take that in and go from there. This is Valentine's week, the week of love. There's so many aspects of love. I don't even know where to begin to talk about love, but I'm going to just start with the love that God had for each one of us when he created us. God's great love created each and every one of us we were birthed out of the love of God. God wanted many, many children, so to speak. He wanted many souls. And he loved each one of them as he gave birth to them. And as they slowly but surely moved out of the higher dimension that's so very high, I can't even mention it. It's beyond, beyond, beyond God. As we understand God to be on this limited planet Earth. God created us equal to God with that beautiful DNA of God in us. Because God loved us. And he said, oh, I want my children to grow and to change and to express who they are. I want them to have many different talents and abilities. And I want many children because I want them all to develop different skills. Because I know there's unlimited skills that these wonderful, wonderful children that I've just created will find as they develop and become more of God. So God was so happy, was so happy to create us. And within us we have that DNA of love. But through the many incarnations that we've had, we've forgotten what the DNA of love is. Because once we got onto the third dimension, 
which was living in the opposites. Love had a different meaning for our development. As we move into this time of love, because this week, this is like a little week of, I'm going to make this a parenthesis. This week is a parenthesis of love. I want you to think about it as a parenthesis of love. And I want you to practice love. But I want you to practice real love. So when I say that to you, what am I really saying to you? I remember uh, 45 years ago, I wanted to learn more about love. I'd gotten uh, the invitation to uh, do uh, be the chaplain at uh, the, uh, I know that this is so long ago, but we actually had uh, the Mother's Club for the elementary school. And I was invited to speak each week, month on whatever subject I wanted to talk on. So I chose uh, 1 Corinthians 13th chapter, which is about love. And I read that over, and I thought, I'll take each month, and I'll talk about uh, patience, and I'll talk about all the different aspects of love that's in that chapter. But when I got all through that eight months that I did that, I said to myself, I still don't understand love. God, teach me about love. There's some part of me that doesn't understand what you want to tell me about love. I love my children. I loved my husband. I love my friends. But in that same thing, I expected them to give to me what I was missing in my life. Do you hear that? I wanted them to give to me what I was missing in my life. That's a big statement I just made to you. I wanted them, them, to give me what I was missing in life. And when I realized that about myself, I said to myself, okay, all right, I need to rethink this whole subject. I'm seeing that my love is very conditional. Hmm, conditional love. Jesus said, love thy neighbor as thyself. He didn't say, love my neighbor and hope that they love me enough to, if I need to borrow a cup of sugar, I have somebody to go to to borrow a cup of sugar. So my love, even for my neighbors, was very conditional. And I began to really look at love from every aspect of love. If I got my needs met, what were my needs? Even if they were met, even if they were met, I was still lacking. I was lacking. And I know I sat down and meditated about that. I'm lacking. What do I need? What is it that I want? I want to know God. If God is love, I need to go to the source. I need to go to the source of love. If God created me out of love, I need to go to the source of that love that created me. And then my search began. I meditated on that for weeks. And all of a sudden, I had a revelation. And the revelation was, nothing will fill your heart except me, God said to me. Nothing will fill that spot. You want to stuff something in it? Go right ahead. A new car? A new relationship? A new job? Try it. You will always lack 
lack in something, more money. You've had so many incarnations wanting so many things. And God has given you everything you've ever wanted in any lifetime. Eventually, eventually, if you desire it 200 years ago, and now we're here, some of the things that are happening right now are desires of love that you had way back there. So what is real and what isn't real? What is it? How can I open my heart to God when I had so many needs and it says, come to me and I will fulfill you? Well, I believed that everything was on the third dimension. Of course, I didn't call it the third dimension at the time. I just called it in my life. In my life. And I kept trying to fill that void over and over. For many incarnations, I tried to fill that void. I was a nun in another lifetime wanting to fill that void. I was a soldier that fought for God, thinking that that was going to fulfill my void. Many, many lifetimes, I tried to fulfill this great void in me. And God's not going to let anything fulfill it except God, the essence of the whole beingness of who you are. Nothing will fulfill it. Give it up. Give it up. And say, I only want one thing. I desire only one thing, to know God. To know God. And as I evolve to that desire to know God, what happened was I began to move into new understandings of love. I had too many, too many parameters on my love. I had to let go. Now, does that mean I sit around and let everybody walk all over me? And I love them and I'm not going to say a word. I'll be the martyr. Oh, I did that in another lifetime. It never got me anywhere, but I thought I loved, only to come back in another lifetime to find out what love was. So here I am, another lifetime, trying to learn about what love is. Well, my experience in love has been very, very interesting, because love of God in other words, it's loving the God within, but not the ego or the personality. So now I got to get rid of my ego to know more about love. Know more about my soul. Nor ab know nor more about every essence of my beingness. If love is the answer, hmm, then what is the question? If love is the answer, love is the answer, I needed to truly understand the many aspects of love. Many, many aspects of love. It taught me a lot. Loving my children was disciplining them and supporting them and helping them get their homework done, helping them hone their abilities, looking at each one as a soul evolving, just like I was evolving. What does that soul need? How can I help that soul developed what it came to develop. That became a question within me. And I realized I was so unprepared, unprepared to answer that question. How do I see my child as an individual expression of God when it was my child? And it was given to me to take care of. Oh, I had to shred that idea and say, this is a gift. This, this soul is a gift to me. 
and I want to learn to love it. Not as the parent, parent that criticizes or, or overly loves and gives it too many things. Because, oh, I didn't have much when I was a child. I need to give my child everything. No. Maybe that child doesn't need everything. Maybe it needs something so different. So I began to meditate on the, my children. I want to learn to love them. So I meditated on my children. I would say, well, what's this child doing here? What do I need to do? I realized that I was treating all my children the same. I had four daughters. I treated them all the same. I even dressed them alike. When my 12-year-old says, I don't want to dress like my three-year-old sister, oh, whoa, <laughs> I better wake up. I better wake up. Yeah, I was that kind of mom. <laughs> well, believe me, in the 50s and 60s, that's what moms did with their children. They dressed the boys, the girls, and everything all kind of alike. alike. <laughs> I laugh about it now because it's so funny that that's what I did. Uh, and that was part of the, the culture of that time. I have to say, look, I have to give myself a little bit of uh, uh, leeway here the culture of the time. But now this 12, 13 year old was asking something new from me. And I had to meditate on what is it that she really needed from me. And with four daughters, they each had a different need from this spiritual parent that they had. Because you are a spiritual parent, whether you recognize it or not, whether you believe it or not, or whether you ever thought of it or not, you are a spiritual parent to your child. A spiritual parent. And if you are single and you have no children, then you are a spiritual friend to anybody you meet. You are a spiritual friend. You don't look at your friends like they are um, friends that you want something from. You look at them and say, what can I do to help that, that soul? They're in my life for a purpose. How can I help them? What can I do for them? How can I bless them? And I realized that my two brothers that I had were my spiritual brothers. And I never looked at my brothers that way when I was a young girl. I never looked at them that way. It took until I was 33 years old before I looked at my brothers as souls evolving. And why were they in my life? What were they there to teach me? What was I there to help them to learn? You see, there's so many facets to love. God created this third dimension so that we'd learn to, to love and support. And what we've done is turned it around and if if he sends me flowers for Valentine's Day, then I'm loved. No. And yes. You see what the dilemma is here? No and yes. That is an expression of love. And that's a wonderful way of showing love. But if those flowers are given because they want something, from you. They want you to uh, uh, bake them chocolate cookies or something, uh, or they want all kinds of things from you, then it's not given in love. 
It has a tainting to it. Whatever you do in love, do it from a pure heart. And then that brought me to another whole subject. What in heaven's name is a pure heart? Purity. What is a pure heart? It's giving unconditionally, forgetting the self in the, the midst of giving. You know, it's not about letting other people walk all over you either. We don't let our children walk all over us. We shouldn't. We need to help them to understand. And other people in our life, we can't let them walk all over us because if we allow that, we are creating really bad karma for them and for ourselves. My job, my desire of my heart is to get you off the karmic law and not create more karma for you. That's what I want for you. I want to get you out of that law, and you can get out of that law because there's forgiveness here along with that law. Forgive thyself. Forgive others. But you can't let them walk on you because you're creating a very bad vacuum of unlove. But you can't go around screaming and yelling at them because your needs aren't met. That's not love either. That's not, but being there in support and understanding what that soul is really trying to tell you. If you happen to be a manager and you are managing other people, look at them as souls evolving. How can you best tap into the things that they need from you in support of what they're doing this lifetime. That's love. That's the essence of love. That's what God does. He supports us all the time in making better choices for ourselves because God wants us out of the karmic law in the third dimension wants us to live in the higher dimension of self. And when I realized that God wasn't going to fill my heart with more beautiful cars or more money, no, God wasn't going to fulfill that. Oh, God, give me a better job. I will give you a karmic job that will help you grow. Well, that's not the job I want. I want something really easy where I was effortless. Hmm, that's interesting, God says. Ooh, hmm, an effortless job. Not going to learn anything so you can keep your comfort zone? This is not what this school is about. It's about facing those challenges and becoming more of who you are. That's loving yourself, facing those channels. And those people that are coming into your life to, to help you to grow. Look at everybody in your life as somebody that God has sent to you to love and to support in some way that doesn't mean sit down and let them take advantage of you because that's not love either, as I explained. But be there for them. Figure out what is it that's really going on in their life. You see, they live in the opposites and they see everything black and white, love and hate. You, who stand beyond the opposites and are looking into the life of opposites, into your parentheses in eternity, you're looking at this and they are stuck in it. They are stuck in the glue of the opposites. How can you help them out of the opposites and help yourself out of the opposites at the same time? How can you do that? How is it possible? It's stopping. 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 Stop.
stop what you're doing. Stop. Think about what you're doing. Take a moment to think about your life and the people in your life. How can you serve them? What can you do? How can you really love them? And then say, God, teach me about love. I am not going to fulfill anything but you in my heart. And then with you in my heart, I can learn to love more. Desire only God. Desire. This is what Jesus said. Desire only God. Yogananda. Saya Baba. Meher Baba. Love. Love God. Devote your life to God. The God essence of your beingness. Not the God up in the sky that you want to worship and, and adore and not take in. You have to take it in your whole beingness and illuminate that part of you, that part of you that has the full conscious awareness of God within you. But you have to stop what you're doing. Stop it. Stop it. And look at your life. What am I doing in my life to love others? Valentine's Day is coming. I'll be here in a few days. Devote yourself to love this week. Ask your out-of-body teacher, please help me to understand more about love. I think I understand about love, and I've heard these things before. I've read these things before, but there's another aspect of love I need to learn. And I am determined to learn that aspect. Help me to learn. Help me to look at my children, the people I work with, my neighbors, in a new way. In a new way. The essence of God will help you. Because it's right here. It's within you. And it, you have to empower it. Because God wants to help you. Your God essence wants to help you. And it says, I'm going to let you fill it up with anything but your true self. I'm not going to let you stick another relationship in there, a better relationship, somebody that's going to love you and take care of you. And then there comes that time when they're not taking care of you as well as you thought they should. So let's just dump them and find somebody else who will do a better job. That just got you lots of marriages and lots of divorces and lots more karma to do in other lifetimes. As I said, my job is to help you out of the third dimension and that means off the karmic law. So let us just take a moment now and take a deep breath, breath and just come with me on a little journey. So close your eyes. Close your eyes and be one with me. Be one with your God self. Your God self. We are moving into that infinite intelligence, the great creator of the universe that created us. We're moving into that vibration and that energy. And say thank you, thank you, thank you God. 
for waking us up to new love. And this is Valentine's week, the week of love. I will begin a practice. I will begin a practice. And I'm saying this for each one of you that is listening to me. I'm praying with you. Asking for new revelations to come forth in your consciousness about love. And since this week is about love, you're going to be reminded of this on television, on greeting cards, or wonderful boxes of candy at the candy store, heart-shaped with all kinds of goodies. the opposites, the karmic law that has kept us stuck for so many eons of time. You see, we have to desire to get off the law. But we have to understand how the law worked in our life. And that's a spiritual journey on itself. That's real love. If love is the answer, there is no question. And now take a deep breath and come back to the presence of this room. Knowing that you are truly loved. Loved from the great heart of God that created you and gave you the capacity to love more than you ever thought possible. Have a wonderful, wonderful Valentine's Day and a wonderful week of love. See you next week as we move forward on our wonderful journey together. Wow, that to me is such a a powerful, rich video. I just want to take a moment, just breathe it in, allow that all that information to just settle. Um, as she was talking, of course, more and more uh, information just kept uh, uh, revealing. And uh, I've seen this video easily a hundred times since she's made it. And every time I've ever watched it, it's always the energy hasn't lacked. It's just ongoing, ongoing. I was just asking myself as I'm watching it just now, you know, how can this how can the video from when I first watched it to today, as many times I've seen it still have that energy that's so, um, it's palpable. And 
to me, it's because she's she's talking and she's expressing uh, pure love, which when I was asking that, it's like, well, of course, because pure love is is timeless. That's why these these truths that are uh, expounded. She mentioned a uh, number of uh, master teachers uh, uh, in this video uh, that they've expounded that are as true today as they were when they were uttered from their own lips. So um, just amazing, amazing. So uh, some key points. I just figured uh, let's, let's, there's nothing really I can add to this video, but as I'm as I'm watching it, uh, something that we can um, uh, maybe some points to mention uh, as we are preparing for this uh, week of love, uh, as Valentine's Day is uh, coming this Tuesday, that uh, we can um, you know talk about the uh, or at least ask, as she says, for new understandings of love. And um, you know, one of the things I, I that just that came to me also I'm watching the video is that. She had mentioned that you know we're created from uh, from from God, the source of love, and we all have this DNA within us. And and uh, it just dawned on me that you know as I'm was searching for a, a teacher or just really starting to get to a point where I was asking for that more. Uh, what was it that I was really asking for? And it was pretty apparent that uh, I, I wanted. To, I wanted someone to really teach me how to love. And as, as I've been under her guidance uh, for these 20 years, I can tell you it's, uh, it's been mind blowing as well as um, uh, eye opening for me because she had spoke about this, um, um, you know, that exercise she had done when she was going to speak about love and she was taking a, uh, uh, an eight month or eight week uh, uh, course on a particular topic uh, from, from uh, First Corinthians. And uh, after the entire week, uh, she spoke about, you know, really having no more understanding of love than she did when she first started and uh came to um you know understanding that that uh you know that there was nothing that was going to be able to fill that uh that void or what she used lack uh than, than god and then she asked the question you know you know to know god what what's next and then she gave us some some little little signposts that to know god was to move into new understandings of love and to um, to move into new understandings of love, we had to shed the ego. And that's where this thought of like, oh man, I'm, I'm seeing my ego. I need someone to show me how to love. And as a teacher, as she says that she, uh, her job and really her love is to move us from that ego point of third dimensional existence to that higher that higher portion, that higher part of us that is not seeking um, that um, what she was missing or what we are missing or what I'm missing from another person or a situation outside of me. And uh, it's it's so clear um, how much uh, that is the case um, in that third dimension. Uh, experience. So, you know, to more to see more of where my ego is um, running the show uh, and looking for a reaction and expecting a reaction for its so-called giving um, is to me the what I've come to understand that. Uh, that part that she wants me to see then that, that can't uh, reside uh, where love is, which is my self-centeredness, which is that ego and in being inhuman, you know, and, and uh, having this DNA within us, it, it's the uh, it's the journey that has to be crossed. We have to, you know, go out, fulfill desires, uh, get to a point where these desires aren't doing what we thought they would do. 
uh, until we get to that asking of more. We've heard this uh, you know, many times before. And that uh, at some point, um, we have to find that center, that love within. And uh, you know, so this week, as she talks about this parentheses of love, it's a, it's a uh, uh, like a homework for us that we can. Uh, and I'll put a plug in at the same time with this homework, uh, you know, to come out on Thursdays and 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 share your experience with us because I think it's so rich that we'll have a lot to uh, share about that. That in this uh, this parentheses of love, uh, most importantly, that I'm going to ask uh, suggest is to, for us to put our observer self uh, on. And, uh, and when I'm speaking of that observer self, we're, we're talking about that part that is witnessing uh, our actions without really tying into that piece that we're watching. So if we can watch our, our actions from that, well, with a little bit of space, we'll uh, be able to view uh, and see the, you know, the portions of love that we are, uh, that we need to adjust and, um, and correct. And to me, that is part of our, that is the evolution uh, soul is that it's just a continuous um, adjustment and correction, adjustment and correction. Um, that has been what I've learned throughout the, the years with her. The uh, and she says let's start let's start with our relationships um, to look at all of our relationships from our spiritual glasses to see uh, our children as souls um, to see our uh, our partners as souls our coworkers neighbors uh, anyone that we come in contact as souls and ask the question. You know, how can I support this soul? Uh, one of the first lessons uh, with my work that uh, it's just popped in my mind that uh, she was teaching me love within my work. Uh, when I met her uh, again uh, in the early days, I was a struggling business guy and, um, you know, uh, trying to get a, 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 bit, a company off the ground. And, uh, uh, she, one of the, her first suggestions to me was to uh, go find a job, <laughs> go, go look for a job. And of course, my ego was just um, uh, not happy, not happy with uh, the suggestion because I'm a business guy. I mean, uh, I'm my own boss. I, I, I just uh, it didn't make sense to go look for a job. But, um, you know, something inside of me, uh, you know, knew that she knew what she was uh, was uh, saying and trusted her and did exactly that. I uh, went out looking for work and uh, continually uh, getting the door uh, slammed. It was uh, just this um, ongoing uh, door, just ego getting slammed uh, to the point where um, after months, of not being able to uh, find the work because of either, uh, you know, overqualified, underqualified, just it doesn't matter. Uh, no one was, no one was uh, going to hire James uh, in this process. And I recall coming into uh, her home and, and uh, said to her, you know what? I am, I'm ready to work for anyone at this point. And it was that shift of consciousness that uh, that she was working on for me to make to have this change, and um, uh, she said at that point she goes, "Go make your phone calls. Uh, go ahead, and go start making your phone calls uh, with my with uh, my old work, my, my business work for phone calls." And it was uh, it was so instant um, that I knew I knew this was all due to the work that had transpired. And uh, because every call was, uh, you know, was a close and, and, and it was like I said, I was described as like shooting fish in a barrel. And, um, you know, uh, after a little while we were you know, sitting in, 
we were talking about how much work has changed. You know, business is doing uh, doing uh, well, and and uh, what she had told me that when I first started my business, she said, "Why did you get into business?" And I said, uh, "Well, it was to be my own boss. Uh, I didn't want to be accountable to anyone." And um, and you know, where are you now? And of course, uh, that whole change was that at that point I realized. I was going to always be accountable and then I needed to put my uh my clients or my you know whoever I'm going to be working for or with first and take care of their needs and in so doing it would uh you know I mean it didn't matter the point was uh, it was for me to uh put them first and that to me was a a, a an understanding of love uh, with my clients to what could I do for them and um, and finding solutions and putting their needs first was fulfilling uh, this 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 uh, this void and uh, so service uh, tends to be a, a, a topic that I put literally with love and when we're asking this question how can I support this soul I mean we might as well just say hey how can I be of service to this soul how can I best serve my child? How can I best serve my client? How can I best serve my my wife, my husband, you know, anyone that's that's there? So in this week of parentheses of love, we're let's let's look at that. Let's look at these um, this way of how we can best serve uh, or how we can best love by serving um, those that we are in our relationship. So it's going to be a, a wonderful week. Uh, Valentine's Day, we're going to have an opportunity to express love. And uh, she says, keep keep a pure heart. That'll be a, a key for us when we are expressing our love is this pure heart. And I want to uh, wish everyone a wonderful, wonderful Valentine's Day. As I mentioned, uh, this Thursday, um, uh, we'll have a Q&A session, and it's been a wonderful, wonderful uh, Thursday where uh, a lot of those uh, that are here are their Thursday, and watching them grow uh, and, and understand themselves has just been uh, uh, an absolute joy, so we invite you to come out. And um, also, the, uh, the center is uh, solely supported by uh, all your love. And we're a uh, link for that has also been posted in the chat room, and we're we're grateful for you on that. Uh, grateful for uh, all your support there. And uh, for any of you that are going to be with uh, with friends and family today uh, with the uh, big Super Bowl, this is also a great opportunity for you to uh, <laughs> express love with whoever uh, they're going for. If you are uh, going for one team and you have others in there that are going for the other. Be a great way to uh, to um, to love unconditionally, and um, uh, take the opportunity to watch this video um, uh, each day um, this week, and just um, allow those words to just vibrate within you, and and and, and recognize how. Um, you know, these new understandings uh, pop in, pop into your consciousness as we grow and expand. And I wanna wish everyone a, a happy Valentine's Day and a wonderful week. Bye for now.